Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. Today I'm going to review another vintage ink and it is called Parker Quink, maybe Super Quink. I don't find any difference between that. And the color is permanent green. And if you like the videos I usually make, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I want to show you this ink because it, it, it really has some value to me, some emotional value. I really enjoy this ink and maybe this ink review will take a little bit longer because of the packaging. And so, this ink was available in ink bottles and ink cartridges. It is not available anymore. It was discontinued just a few years ago, but it has been around in Parker range for a very long time. Unfortunately, it is no longer around, but I could still find uh, some for a lot of time and I think you can still find them online and maybe in some stores. And I also found that some green ink still appears somewhere uh, some time ago. Uh, Waski Squirrel made a video where he used Parker Quink Green and the ink that he showed had a different shade from this one. So I wonder, I'm not saying because I don't have that kind of information, but I wonder if eventually Parker is still producing Parker Quink Green through their uh, through licensing uh, to the Indi to the Indian um, factory called to so the Indian brand that is called Luxor because they have some pens that are made by Luxor for Indian market and I wonder if that green ink that he found was made there and so let me go back to this and this is this will be a little hard to show and I'll have to because I don't want to change this kind of setup, but I'll have to move things around. So this is a big bottle of Parker Quink ink and you can see it is a bottle of 568 milliliters and it says cleans your pen as it writes because of that Solve X that they say it has, which is some substance that makes the ink to have a very uh, active smell. Now, let's see inside. I'll do this in, the, in this horizontal format, sorry, for you to, to see. There is some information there. And here it says, for best results, flush your fountain pen with cold water before filling with quink, and then it says, prevent coming and clogging prevents metal corrosion, rubber rot, dissolves any sediment and cleans your pen as it writes. And I usually find that when I have a vintage pen or a used pen that I get that is full of dried ink, sometimes just after the first, uh, first quick uh, flushing of the pen, not a very thoroughly one, I usually put in Usually it is uh, the black uh, quink because it the, the black absorbs the other color, let's say that, that way, and it usually makes the pen easier to clean the next time that I'm going to clean. So, we have that part and then there is this, like a cardboard inner sleeve, like this, and you have a bottle and also you have this little thing made of rubber that you put on the mouth of the bottle to pour ink in, into smaller ink wells, maybe into smaller ink bottles or if you were at places you'd have the, those glass ink wells for each desk, you could pour ink inside each one of those because you cannot fill a pen from here. And this one had some little insects eating the paper of the labeling, but you you can see here Parker Quink contains Solvex, very beautiful bottle. So I really love this and I had to show it to you. This is uh, a big one, sorry for all this noise, I'll put 
all these back together, but I want to show you now the the other variations where I could get this. Uh, this is also a vintage bottle from, I think, the same uh, age of that one because it's very similar in design and it says the same thing contains Solvex and so on. It is 57 milliliters, the same kind of precautions that you can read there that I read and inside you have this ink bottle. Maybe it is not from the same age exactly because this one has the quink in black and that one has the quink in green, in green, yes, or in white, green in white and white in green. So, interesting bottle, very similar to any other bottles, there it has the marker. And let me just show you a detail and I think it's here where you can see the available six permanent colors. I will read it because I don't know if you can read this. I can zoom in, maybe it's easier. Six permanent colors for records and documents. Black, blue, black, blue, turquoise, red and green. One washable color for the school and home use, royal blue. And it was available in one um, fluid ounce, Two, which is this size. I don't have the smaller size for quink green, I have for red and black. 20, which is that big bottle that is here. Sorry, I, two, four. I, there was four before, I didn't mention it, which is the double of this uh, bottle. I don't have any of those. Then there was the 20, which is this one that I showed you before, the big one. And there was even a bigger one of 40 fluid ounces. So very, very big. Uh, and I don't have that one for green, although I have one of those for red. And when I make the Red Quink review, I will show it to you. Here you have the, I think, when it's not the, the, the last of the, the packages, but it was the common one that I bought when I was a teenager and then I was studying in the university. I used to use green a lot, really a lot, brown, green and black, that's what I used most, and usually uh, Parker Quink. So the design changed but the bottle is the same and the packaging the same and the capacity is the same. It cost around, at that time, making the, the calculations about 2 euros. And here you have the Parker cartridges. There were boxes of five ink cartridges. This is with the newer lay layout. There was one bottle later then that had this kind of uh, packaging, black. And let me show it. There was these ink cartridges with the green mouth for us to know that we were using green ink. And this is all Okay, I spent eight minutes and something talking just about packaging. Sorry, but I thought it was an interesting thing. Maybe I'll put in the, on the description that if you want to see the actual review, you can skip two minutes, eight or nine. And now let's take finally a look at this ink. This is the Parker Quink Green. This is the swatch that I made and you can see how the ink behaves. It can get, it has some shading, definitely. You can see here where the, the ink pulls up. It, you can have more, uh, a darker shade where the pools of ink are bigger. And sometimes on the edges, you can see some almost black color on the edges, which is something nice that some people search for nowadays in these modern inks that have lots of effects and it, I think it was not that common back then. Now, I want to show it next to some other inks and I have three other inks. I always like to compare inks with three others, even if they are not the, exactly the same. And the first one is this. This is the ink that is here just to show you. No, this has nothing to do with that. This is Sailor Gentle Epinard, which is a very dark, muddy, 
bluish green ink which is very very beautiful but I would say it is a shade of black more than a shade of green so there is not much to do with this Parker Quink Green then I have an ink that is quite interesting which is the Montegrappa ink it is a darker ink much darker I think much more saturated and and let me try to show it to you it even has some reddish sheen as you may see and the Parker one has that like black edges but not really a sheen at least in my opinion so this ink is not that similar also and finally let's go to this one and this one is the one that I find to be similar and this is the Lamy Green. Let me put this on the middle to be easier to compare. I think this is much, much similar. I would say if you want to replace this color, you can have the Lamy Green. You also have that, um, that outer edges, almost black, so very similar. However, I find this one to be just a little bit on the bluer side but just just a little bit so this is a similar ink in my opinion and now let's go for the chromatography which is something that i find interesting usually and what can you see in this one you have these i can't even like a beige uh, line there which is a little bit more permanent but it is almost white so you it won't stand out of the page then all the color is washed away so this ink is not at all water resistant and in the edge of this ink you can see not much yellow but you can see a yellowish green with a turquoise blue so this is what I can show you from the chromatography it's hard it's very hard for me to give a real interpretation of this ink through the chromatography besides it is not water resistant and it's made of green yellow and blue that's it and now let's see how the pen how the ink behaved in this part I always say the pen the ink behaves on paper and I have here three different kinds of paper the usual ones that I always show which are the Moleskine paper, the Oxford optic paper and the Navigator copy paper and on the Moleskine this ivory colored paper that I ripped off I ripped uh, off of, an, uh, of a planner uh, you can see that this ink behaves really well almost no feathering which is almost impossible in Moleskin, but you can still see it and I find that the lines spread a little bit. I have to say that I wrote with an F nib and I forgot to show you the pen. The pen was this one and this is the Parker Frontier Metallic Green. I already made a review of this pen. It is a cartridge converter pen and it has a fine nib. So, I would say the fine nib with this ink on this paper turned out like an M line. And here on, on um, Oxford optic paper, I would say that the, the performance is the more real one. Here you can see clearly the, the shading and you can't see really shading real shading on the Moleskin, but you can see shading on the Oxford optic paper, no bleed through, no problem with that, not much also on Moleskin, but there is some ghosting. With Oxford paper there is nothing to see, and you can see some shading, and I would say that this ink behaves really well. This ink is wet enough, it's not one of the wettest inks, I would say this is a very safe ink to use, not wet enough, not, no, not too wet, that's what I meant, that is what I meant, not too dry, it has for me a perfect ink flow and it is not too saturated, which I find it, I find this a really nice ink, or 
maybe this is because I used that for many many times when I was uh, at school that I find this one of my favorite things and it is more an emotional response than an objective uh, choice. Here on regular copy paper the difference that you can see is that there is no shading. The shading is lost and also that the line width is bigger than the line is on the Oxford paper. So this ink tends to spread a little bit to become with a um, broader line in other ink in other papers that are not so friendly for uh, pens and I use these inks in my ink reviews in three in four different papers in the Moleskine, the Oxford the Navigator and then on Rhodia and I find always the best performance is found both on, on Oxford and on Rhodia. And speaking about Rhodia, let's go here and take a look at it. Maybe I will zoom in this time for you to check more what I'm showing to you. I'm getting used to this setup, so bear with me. I'll have to move things around a little bit. Okay, and we have here the Parker Queen Green in this Rhodia dot pad. The behavior of the ink is perfect. There is no bleed through, no ghosting, nothing. The, the, the behavior is very similar that with one that you find on the Oxford paper. Although on the Oxford paper it looks a little bit more saturated that on, than on Rhodia paper, which is somehow interesting. But this paper is the same where I made the ink swatch. About the flow of the ink, as I told you, this is a perfect ink to write. I really, really like it. And if I want to see if a pen is behaving well, I, I use this ink often to see if the if it's if the nib is really a fine or not. It is a, a ink that an ink that is very reliable for testing fountain pens, in my opinion. The drying time is quite fast, about 10 seconds. It's almost completely dry. 15, 20, you can see there is just a little smudge here at 15, but at 20 it's perfect. So uh, it, it really dries fast. Sorry, I hit the tripod. At 10 seconds it is good to go. And about water resistance, as we expected from here, although there is this faint line, there is no water resistant at all. So if you write something here with this ink and you get it dry and you get it wet, forget about it. You have nothing left to read. So don't use this for permanent notes for yourself. Use it for uh, for notes that you will go, you will pass them for another paper or you will copy or are just meant to be short-lived or that you store in conditions that you know that will not receive water. And now let's see the phrase and the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. I love this pen, I love this nib and I also love this ink, as I already told you. So, this is one of my favorite inks ever. Maybe because of some uh, emotional attachment to it. And this is something that I really wanted to show you. I don't know if you'll be able to find this ink anywhere. But if you want and you find it interesting, you can search for it and then let me know. And please let me know if in any time of your life you ever tried these Parker Quink inks that are now discontinued and what is your relation with them. This is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye.